knee replacement is probably a really silly term for what we actually do when we do a knee replacement. I wish it was a different term, but that's the one that we've sort of used over the decades. We don't really replace the knee like replacing a transmission on a car. A lot of patients think that we cut their shin bone and we cut their thigh bone and the whole thing comes out like a transmission block and we put a whole new transmission in. Really what we're doing is resurfacing the knee or putting new replaced surfaces of metal and plastic on the ends of the thigh bone and the shin bone and behind the kneecap. And therefore the raw bone on bone surfaces that are hurting so much are no longer there. They're replaced with things that you can't feel like metal and plastic and therefore the pain goes away. That operation is one that we come to slowly and steadily and thoughtfully with patients. And usually we practice a lot of non-operative treatment for many years sometimes before we actually get to the point of doing knee replacement. The things that we do for non-surgical treatment of the knee include things like modifying activity, physical therapy to strengthen the muscles around the knee and in the core muscle strengthening as well, weight loss if that's a concern, um, increasing uh, activities which are non-impact aerobic activities like swimming, cycling, elliptical trainer, rather than running or sometimes even for some patients, prolonged walking can make their knees hurt more than cycling, for example, could. Then we also add in things like anti-inflammatory medications and we try to limit those if we can, but sometimes those are necessary on a long-term basis to help patients cope with the discomfort in the knee before they're ready for surgery and sometimes they're very, very effective. If one is going to be on long-term oral anti-inflammatory medications, it's important to involve your primary care doctor to monitor your blood pressure and kidney function to make sure those stay stable and okay during the time you're taking those medications. If those things aren't working well enough, then we start talking about injections of different chemicals into the knee. Most typically, and, and usually the first, is cortisone. Cortisone is a liquid anti-inflammatory medicine, just like liquid aspirin or liquid ibuprofen, and it decreases the inflammation in the joint dramatically and oftentimes can be very effective for months to even years for some patients. We don't really know how well it will work until we try it, and sometimes it works again for months to years, and sometimes it only works for a week or two, and then we have to think about something different. And it all depends upon a patient's physiology and how bad their arthritis is, and sometimes a little bit of luck is involved as well. If cortisone injections work really well, then we can continue those on a repeated basis, provided we spread them out by at least about four months or more apart. Too close together can damage the joint, but far apart is safe for the joint and can be done theoretically indefinitely. Usually what happens is over time, the arthritis slowly gets worse and patients will tell us, you know, it's not working as well anymore and we have to do something different, at which point we start thinking about the next level of involvement. Other types of injections include platelet-rich plasma, which is your own body plasma that we can inject into the knee after putting your blood into a centrifuge. That's been shown to be better than placebo, but about 75% of patients will see, receive benefit, but about 25% will not. It is expensive at about $800 currently per injection, and most insurance companies don't cover it, so we are thoughtful about whether we do that or not. So-called viscosupplementation, which is uh, chicken cartilage gel injections into the knee, which consists of a chemical called hyaluronic acid, which is the lubricating protein for cartilage, are used widely throughout the United States and through Europe. The data on them is somewhat variable in that most studies out there will say that it doesn't show that the injections work better than a placebo, but some patients feel wonderful after the injections, about maybe 30% of patients, and so therefore, if you had them before and they work well for you, it's fine to continue them. But if you're going to start them for the first time, we encourage you to do some background research and decide if that's the right treatment for you. And certainly we can discuss it in the office and decide um, at that point as well. Other types of non-surgical treatment would include using a cane, sometimes using a brace, depending upon the type of knee arthritis you have and the type of deformity of the knee. Also, some patients will find that uh, cold therapy and heat therapy can be very helpful to them, as well as massage therapy, chiropractic therapy, and sometimes even acupuncture therapy. And we recommend that you try those if you, if you are interested in them, and if they work well for you, they're fine to continue and they won't damage the knee in any way that we know of. We don't currently recommend stem cell therapy because there's no data that shows that it does any significant cartilage regrowth inside the knee or any type of change of the arthritis. 
and it's extremely expensive. And so therefore it's probably a very expensive placebo. So it's not yet something that we use in our practice and we don't recommend it to patients yet.